Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing the new public charge rule that is coming out with respect to U.S. immigration benefits and what's called the I-944 form. And that form is called the Declaration of Self-Sufficiency. So under the Trump administration, they're taking a much harder line with respect to U.S. immigration matters. And it's now starting to hit us with respect to U.S. family-based immigration. I've previously made a video on this channel regarding the DS-5540 form. That is kind of the sister form to this form, the I-944, because this new public charge rule creates a real impetus, if you will, on the applicant to show that they are affirmatively not going to go on to means-tested benefits in the United States. In the past, it was a much more for lack of a better term, it was much more of a, it was less of an affirmative duty, for lack of a better term, on the part of the applicant to show that they weren't going to go on means-tested benefits. Instead, it basically, you know, you had the sponsorship requirements, and then basically it had to be shown that, look, this person does not pose a risk of ending up on those type of benefits. Now, the burden of proof to me is just substantially higher. The other thing with respect to this is it creates a great deal of, I hesitate to use the term of dis, uh, discretion, but the adjudicating officer of an I-944 has to believe that the person applying does not pose a risk of going on to these benefits. And I can't, I can't, explain with enough, I cannot explain the gravity of this enough. This, this is really, really important. The, the officer, if they just simply don't feel that the applicant is someone who is not going to go on these benefits, that officer could deny based on that feeling alone. That's the way I read these regulations. So, Who's this going to really apply to? Well, for our purposes, most of the folks that watch this channel, we're mostly dealing with U.S. immigration for family members. So we're dealing with like fiancés of American citizens, spouses of American citizens, spouses of lawful permanent residents. Those folks, the biggest, per, the biggest subset of people this is going to apply to, and we're going to do specific videos on this topic down the road, but just, you know, to truncate it for this video, we're talking about there's going to be, this is really going to impact those who come in on a K-1 fiancé visa and then need to adjust status to get their green card in the United States. This new I-944 form is going to come up in that context, uh, and you're going to have to be dealing with the I-944 form and everything associated therewith. It's really interesting because means-tested benefits have now been, they've now been, expanded, excuse me, I'm just looking for exactly what the exact section of the form where it has the list of benefits, sorry, the, um, we are still dealing with this, this matter is still in a state of flux, and the, the stuff's just coming online, frankly, I've been having to deal with the regulations coming online with respect to immigrant visa cases that are coming through out here in Southeast Asia, the embassies, but what are we talking about with respect to things that things that may be considered a black mark, if you will, with respect to the I-944? So things like supplemental security income, temporary assistance for needy families, TANF, general assistance, supplemental nutrition assistance program, SNAP, that's also sometimes referred to as food stamps, Section 8 housing, Section 8 project-based rental assistance, public housing under the Housing Act of 1937, federal funded Medicaid. It's my understanding as of now, Medicare Part D, as well as WIC, are not yet on this sort of list, if you will. And all of this is extremely important. Again, I cannot stress the gravity heavy, heavily enough. The biggest issue with respect to these changes is this I hesitate again to use the term discretion, but it is, it's a statutory framework under which the officer 
needs to believe that the person applying does not, will not go on these benefits in the future. So it's not at the moment of application that this is relevant. That officer needs to be convinced that this prospectively will not happen. Now, how exactly you prove something that hasn't occurred yet, to me, that's a difficult thing. That being stated, they can make logical inferences based on the evidence presented to them. So I think what is going to happen, and going to happen quite soon, is adjustment of status cases are going to get substantially, for lack of a better term, more difficult in the relatively near future, or at least they're going to be much more document intensive as a result of this new adjudicatory standard. So the thing to take away from this video, I think the time involved, the resources involved in adjustment of status moving forward is going to be a lot more substantial than it has been in the past, almost exclusively due to not only the public charge rule, but this new, this new I-944 declaration of statutory, uh, I think declaration of statutory intent or statutory sufficiency. And as a result, this is just going to be a much bigger can of worms than it once was when adjusting status in the USA. We hope you find our videos insightful. If so, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so that you can receive up-to-date notifications of legal news in Thailand and the United States.